Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and we're out here for day two of the pond build. What we accomplished on day one is digging this hole behind me that is 15 feet wide and 20 feet long. We also set our waterfall filter about 32 inches higher than ground level and about eight feet from the pond. So we'll have a skimmer basket on that end that, that sucks water up into this filter over here and then it cascades back into the pond. Now this is four foot deep in the center and then we have a secondary ring that's only two foot deep. This pond should hold between eight and 10,000 gallons of water. We should be able to put a bunch of fish in there. We've also got some rock lights that will go down in the water and make this kind of a, a place to have our fire pit and our barbecue grills and just kind of a place for the family to spend time together. Now on day two, we've got a ton of work to do and most of that, the first thing we have to do is clean out the hole and get it shaped up properly so that we can put the liner in. Then additional to that, we have to kind of shape the ground outside of the pond area, including taking all of this dirt that we have on each side and using that to build like a natural berm and slope out in each direction so that it doesn't feel like the water is coming out of a man-made volcano in the middle of the yard. It feels like a more natural feeling to where it's coming from. So we've got a lot of work to do. We better get started on it. It's kind of a weird mix here soil conditions. But kind of what we're looking at is we want these edges, these walls of the pond to be more straight up and down because right now it's all kind of sloping in. It was hard to dig it better than that with the backhoe. See if we can get a better look at it from over here. So basically, we're wanting to clean this out. The problem I'm having is as I step here where I want to stand to rake and shovel, the ground's giving way underneath me. This bank is wanting to push out and I want to keep it formed like that. So I'm going to pull dirt over there and then tamp it. Now what I'm trying to decide is do I want to go around this top ring and do all of it first? I think I should probably clean out the bottom first and I don't think I can do it from up here. I think I'm going to have to get some mud boots and really get down in there to work on it. Yeah. So I got this guy out here because he's got a stronger back or more stamina than I do. He's once you get him going, he'll work harder than I do. But I got my boots on. I'm going to get down in the bottom and start trying to flatten this out and throw some of the loose stuff out. But what we need to accomplish right here is this is all sloped in and we want straight sides. Actually, I need the rake down here if you can get me the rake. So. If we wanted to put in a well, I think this would be a good spot. You only have to go about four feet to hit, hit water. That like groundwater's not very deep. See, what I think what I need you to do is stand up there and try to knock this edge off here. However much we think we can remove it that'll let us put the rock in there 
is, all, is what we have to get. I know what I need. It's right up here. That is a dibble bar, and you think that's carving those sides out faster than anything else? Oh yeah. So if anyone is interested in putting in a pond like you see here, I searched pretty far and wide on the internet at the best site to get one of these pond kits from, and as far as I can tell, the best deal anywhere is from halfoffponds.com. So I'll put a link in this video description where you can go on and check out their kits. This setup I'm doing right now has a liner that is 30 by 25, which gives me a pond that's 15 by 20. Yeah. Okay, we need to come tamp this. Yeah. I'm gonna come even it out a little bit more, like right here. Okay. And that's enough. See, that was worth it. That tiny little bit of extra work. And the entire outside of the, the little shelf is done, except right here where the skimmer's going. Well, we're going to dig it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And everything else is absolutely perfect. I'm very happy with the progress. Woo, doggy! Check another section off the list here. Next things we have to do are set the skimmer box right there. We have to dig out for that, connect the, the hose to it, and then run that hose up here. Then we have to bury that and, and start flattening out all of the areas around the pond with this extra dirt. So the next thing, it's really critical to the whole build, is deciding what water level is going to be. We want water level as close as possible to ground level, just a couple inches below. So when you walk up, it's a full pond. And you kind of establish water level by how you place your skimmer because you want water just below the top of the skimmer so you're sucking off leaves or anything that lands in the pond. So right now we have to use the transit level to find a spot that's close to ground level and use that to establish how high we set the skimmer basically. So go ahead and set this to this spot like right there. Now we, we built this shelf with the idea of it being two feet deep right here. So we've set, set the transit level to here. Now I want to move it up like a foot and ten inches, a foot and nine inches, and, and say that should be our water level, but then we need to mark along the sidewall and make sure that that's not going to have the pond overflowing. So move it up to a foot and nine inches. So now... We take this till it beeps. The water level should be about knee height to me right here. And we take that along the outside edge and see if that's overflowing anywhere. So that's right what we want it to be. We can go around and look for low spots. So my thought is we'll also want a spot probably next to the skimmer that's meant to overflow. So even though we tried to level all the ground around this, what we have right now is we dug a little further than I meant to. So ground level here is higher than ground level over there. So we either need to remove ground here or build it up over there. If we don't do either of those, the pond will never seem full. So we're gonna use some of this ex excavated dirt to build ground level up on that side. And we're talking about a difference of two to three inches. You're good right there. Actually, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And you might need to go a little bit more.
So this is a drain line that's been draining water from this whole part of the yard down into the pond. Now it's going to take overflow from this pond and run it down to the main pond. And all I have to do is attach this catch basin and then we'll set this just a little bit lower than ground level and try to set this up low enough that anytime the pond overflows it runs into this. So we'll kind of sculpt the ground around the pond to make that happen. And then this is the aeration line for the main pond and all we'll need to do we've got the other end of it sticking out over there we'll just run it around to here and couple those together and we'll be back in action we're going to cut it and we're going to stick it into this return filter and then we're going to bury all this line and the plumbing part of this is done yeah we don't want to pull it so tight that it's trying to twist the filter or anything like that So we are almost ready to put our liner in. The only thing we've got to do first is get this dirt pushed away from the edge because I'm concerned that that's all going to fall in, into our liner or between our liner. So if we get that cleared out of the way, we can get the liner in. It'll really look like a pond.
All right, well, I feel really good about the progress we've made on day two of the pond build. So the next thing we'll be doing is putting in the underlayment and then the liner and fasten the liner up and it would be ready to hold water. At that point, we'd still have to connect the pump, but basically that could be a finished pond. But we still have a ton of work left to do because we're gonna rock in all of the walls and the bottom and, and completely build this pond out of stone. So a lot of work left to do, but I feel really good about the progress. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.